Today we're talking about voiceover demos. So there are two ways to go about creating your demo. You can hire a demo producer to produce it for you and it'll sound amazing. Or you can go the do-it-yourself route and self-produce. But if you produce it yourself, can you really expect to be successful? That's the question on today's podcast. Welcome back to the Voice Acting 101 podcast. I'm Jason, here to answer your questions in the least amount of time as possible. This is episode number 10. And today we've got an audio submitted question from Tom. Hey, Jason, I would like it if you could talk a little bit about demos. As a newer voice artist, I'd like to know the pros and the cons of a professionally produced demo as opposed to a self-produced one. Obviously, the biggest difference that I can see is the financial aspect. Many new voice artists like myself just don't have the money to spend on a producer to make a demo that could cost hundreds or even thousands of dollars. I have a self-produced demo that I use for my pay-for-play sites and to put on my website. I produce the best demo that I can. However, am I missing anything by not having a pro demo? Can I really expect to be successful and book work without a professionally produced demo? I'd appreciate any thoughts you have on the topic. All right, thanks for the question, Tom. Let's jump right to the answer on whether you can really expect to be successful and book work without a professionally produced demo. So my answer, Tom, is yes, it is possible. And why do I say that? Because I've been in voiceover for over 20 years, and up until just a few years ago, all of my demos were self-produced. Now, I had a background in radio production, so I knew how to mix voiceover and music and effects. And, you know, with that background producing... Creating demos in voiceover was something that I was familiar and comfortable with. So if I was comfortable with it and familiar with it, why did I end up hiring a demo producer? Well, I had a couple reasons. First, I wanted to see if it made a difference. Like Tom, I kind of wondered if there was something magical about a professionally produced demo. Would more work come because the demo was professionally produced? And would the return on investment be worth it? So it's kind of hard to tell the cost for demo production was $2,500, and it's hard to figure out which work came in because of the professionally produced demo and what work would have come without the demo. And like I've said before, it's rare that a demo gets you hired. It happens sometimes, but usually the demo just gets you a chance to audition, and your audition is what gets you hired. So if I can break that down a little bit more. So the demo kind of shows what you're capable of and whether or not your voice is going to fit the project that they have. And then when you audition, that kind of shows that you're capable of reproducing something from your demo that they liked, but in their own words. So you've got their script and you're, you're providing a short sample, an audition of that script. So then they can hear exactly how your voice sounds with their words. And hopefully they fall in love with it and they want to use you on the project. So many prospects said that they liked my professionally produced demo. But one thing I noticed was that when clients would call out a segment of my demo and they'd say, you know, we like this sound from your demo, can you record a sample for our script? Nine times out of 10, they reference a self-produced demo segment. So that means they are picking a segment from the self-produced demo rather than the professionally produced demo. So what does that mean exactly? It just means that the jobs that I'm hired to do I'm hired because of a self-produced demo. The style, the styles that I'm showing on my self-produced demos are the styles that I'm hired to do most often. And the other reason I hired someone to produce the demo was because I never made time to update my demos. It was always on my to-do list, but it never actually made it to my priority list, right? Auditions, paid work, marketing, those were always my top priority when I when I get into the studio each day still is. But it gets so busy that I don't always have the time to think about updating my demos. So hiring someone forced me to get it updated. And you can use projects you're working on, but most of the work that I do is under non-disclosure agreements, so I can't use it. Or I don't end up seeing or hearing the final product when it's done. So I was thinking about this the other day. Really, what I should do is ask to see the final product more often, and maybe you're already doing this, but I think that's smart for a couple reasons. You could use that as a marketing touch. So basically, you do the project, you wait a couple weeks or a month, and then you check in asking how it turned out, right? That's going to be good customer service. You're going to be able to touch base with the client again, and you get to see the final project. So you can think about, you know, what to do better next time. Maybe you you hear something that you could have done differently, 
And if they're okay with it, then you can use it on your demo. So it's kind of a win, 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 win. If you're just asking them, you know, following up with them about how the project turned out. So those were the main two reasons that I got the demo professionally produced, even though I knew how to do it myself. Uh, I wanted to know would I get more work because of it, and I needed my demo updated, but I just wasn't making the time to do it myself. All right, so let's talk about the benefits of hiring someone to produce your demo. So first up, when you hire a demo producer, it usually starts with a consultation so the producer can hear your voice and you know kind of think about the scripts that are going to be right for your voice, age, and your style. They might want to do a couple coaching sessions if they offer coaching or they think that you need it. Maybe they'll recommend you to someone else. And then they're going to end up writing the scripts for you. And then they schedule a day and a time to actually record the scripts with you. Now, sometimes you can go to their studio to record. I don't recommend that. I would recommend that you record from your own studio. I don't think there's any point in sounding great on your demo in someone else's studio if you can't sound that good in your own studio for real clients on a daily basis. Uh, So my suggestion would just be to record from your own studio when you're uh, hiring a demo producer uh, to create your demo. And usually you're going to be recording on your end. The producer is going to be listening in via something like Skype, and they're going to be directing you and giving you feedback during the session. And then after the session, you just send the file to your producer, and they produce it and do all their producer magic, and they send you a demo probably within a couple weeks. So that's the first benefit of hiring someone else to produce your demo is that they handle everything from writing the scripts and directing you and picking out the music and adding effects and mixing it all together. All you have to do is just show up, read your scripts, and do your job as you normally would, just like the demo producer was a client of yours. And it's a little bit more involved on your end. You know, you you can't just show up. I shouldn't say that, but you want to know your scripts and then, you know, you're going to read your scripts and just do your job, like I said, but you don't you don't have to do any of the back end work. All right, so that's the first benefit of hiring a demo producer. Second benefit, a demo producer is going to give you scripts that may break you out of your comfort zone. There tends to be like a certain style or two we as voice actors are most comfortable with, your go-to read. Uh, so the job of the demo producer when they're directing you is to uncover your other skills that you know you have, but maybe you don't even know that you have. The demo producer can hear the potential usually, and they're going to write scripts, and they're going to direct you in a way to bring that out so that they can show variety on your demo. All right, and the third reason that you may want to hire a demo producer is the connections. So many demo producers have connections with agencies. Once they produce your demo, they may know an agent that would want to hear it, and that could potentially open the door to representation for you with that agency. And then one final benefit of hiring someone to produce your demo, and I'm sure there are many other benefits. These are just the ones that stand out for me. Uh, But the final one is that you can pick the demo producer that specializes in the voiceover niche that you're interested in. So, you know, for me, I'm mostly interested in commercials and e-learning and corporate type of work. And those are the demos that I'm comfortable with. But if I were, if I was into like animation or character work, That's not something that I'm as familiar with. And maybe that's because I don't do that much work in those niches. You know, maybe if I did more work in it, I would be more comfortable with it and know more about it. But that's the benefit of hiring the demo producer who specializes in that niche where you want the demo produced. All right, so now some of the downsides of hiring a producer. And most of these are corrected by going the uh, do-it-yourself, self-produced demo route. But the downsides of hiring a producer are, first, you know, like uh, Tom talked about the cost, it can range from, I would say, $1,500 on the low end to $4,000 to have a producer create it. And, you know, that's usually like a 60-second demo. So it's a little expensive. And second, demos, I think demos should be updated frequently. So if you're, like, practicing and you're working every day, you're going to sound better today than you did six months ago. And your demo needs to reflect that improvement and show what you're able to do today. If you're hiring a demo producer to produce it for you at that cost, and the fact that, you know, I think that the demos need to be updated, hiring a demo producer can just be a huge expense. So if you don't want to spend that kind of money, you can still produce your own demo and have success in voiceover if you do it right, but there are still some pros and cons, just like with hiring the producer. So the benefits of doing it yourself are first, the cost, You know, like everything in the do-it-yourself world, you save a ton of money by doing things yourself, uh, but that's also the downside. You have to do everything yourself. 
like uh, writing scripts. You have to self-direct. You have to find the music, and you have to do all the mixing. And you may still want to hire a writer to handle writing the scripts if you're not comfortable with that. You might also have to buy some music and effects to use. But all in all, it's going to be way cheaper than hiring a demo producer. Another benefit to doing it yourself is that you can do it when you're in the mood. You know, when you hire a demo producer, you usually pick a day and a time to do all the reads. And usually you're going to be doing the reads back to back. If you're doing it yourself, you get to choose a time that's best for your voice, right? You know when you can perform best. For me, I do my best voiceover in the morning. You know, by 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I'm just tired of speaking. I'm tired of using my voice, and I, I don't perform anywhere near as well in the evening as I do in the morning. Sometimes I, I have to do that no matter what, so I have to pull it together and do it. But if I had to choose, I would do all my work in the morning. I'd rather do one script every morning and build the demo, say, like over a week. And you could do that if you're producing it yourself because you can just take your time and do it when the time is right for you. All right, third, audio editing and audio production is a skill that I think all voice actors should have. It's a skill that provides more value to your clients. And, you know, when I first started in voiceover, I was doing fully produced voiceover a few times a week because the clients were asking me to do it. Now, most of my clients have their own production teams and all they want from me is the voiceover. But, you know, I'm still able to do it if it helps a client out. So just knowing how to produce your own voiceover could be good for your clients. You can offer that service if it comes up. And, you know, you're just learning more about the voiceover industry as a whole by doing that. And that's going to help you know how to produce your own voiceover demo. Now, besides having to do everything yourself, the main downside to producing your own demo is gauging for yourself whether your demo is any good or not. I've heard some great sounding do-it-yourself demos. You probably have too. And I've heard some not so great do-it-yourself demos. Now that could mean that the copy is poorly written. The copy like isn't matched to the voice style and age. Maybe it's the wrong music or the wrong effects or the audio levels just aren't balanced. It's too long or boring. There's no variety or maybe it's just not the best performance. So... How do you know if yours is good? And really, when I say good, that means that it showcases your strengths and sounds as professional as your competition, because that's really what you want. You want to sound as professional as the people that you're competing against so that you can actually compete against them. So I won't go into every detail of creating a demo, but a couple points to make. Self-direction, that's another helpful skill to have in voiceover. You're going to use that all the time. So producing your own demo is one way to help improve your self-directing instincts when it comes to interpreting a script. The more you do it, the better you'll get at doing it, but you can improve faster by getting feedback. And I think that's going to be helpful for correcting mistakes that you may be making. So get feedback. A voiceover evaluation can check your demo for mistakes that you're making. It can check Uh, The quality of your audio, it's going to tell you how to improve. So if you have a voiceover demo, get an evaluation, and that's going to be a much more affordable way to see what you're doing right and what you need to work on. And your first demo, it may not be your best work. You know, if I went back and listened to my old demos, they wouldn't sound that good to me, but they were good enough to book work at the time. And since you're going to be updating your demos, it's okay. You're only going to get better, especially if you're getting an evaluation each time you create a demo. So if you prefer to have someone handle everything and don't mind spending a couple thousand dollars, you'll want to hire a demo producer, and most producers are going to create an amazing sounding demo for you. So uh, go that route if you have more money than time. But if you're more of a do-it-yourselfer or you want to build your skills and you see yourself updating your demos often as you improve, then self-producing is an option for you. And an evaluation is a way to get feedback and improve. So don't let anyone tell you or don't think that you can't succeed in voiceover with a self-produced demo as long as you're getting that feedback and you're doing it properly. All right, thanks for the question, Tom. If you have a voiceover question, you can leave it as a comment or I would love to hear your voice. You can record your question and then upload your MP3 to me using the upload button in the link section below. If you've already done that, thank you. I'm trying to get through the questions as quickly as I can, so I will be answering your question in an upcoming podcast. All right, the question for you now is, is your demo professionally produced or self-produced? And are you getting work from it? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks for listening. Have a great week. 
Hey, thanks for checking out this episode of the podcast. If you want to see another video, there's one waiting for you right here, or you can subscribe to the YouTube channel down in the corner. Or if you want to learn the five steps to becoming a voice actor, check out this free guide. It's available to download from voiceacting101.com slash get started. All right, that's it. I'll talk to you next time. See ya.